Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome to my guide for fighting Lava Seath. Lava Seath is not one of the most dangerous monsters in the game to fight, however, he can be one of the most annoying if you don't really understand his mechanics. This is primarily because of his run and shoot moveset, and especially because of the way his shell hardens during the fight, and this changes his hitboxes. Personally, I enjoy the Lava Seath fight because it rewards the player for trying new things and thinking strategically about the best way to fight them. For most of the monsters in Monster Hunter World, you just build weakness exploit and crit boost and then you kind of mindlessly wail on your target. So rather than thinking of Lava Seath as annoying, you might think of him as uniquely challenging and maybe you just didn't take the time to get to know how to overcome those challenges. Lava Seath is also worth farming because he's a tier 2 monster, which means he's one of the best monsters to farm for Warped Face Stones, and Warped Face Stones have the best chance of giving you the really rare decorations. Not to mention, we have the special event quest called The Names Lava Seath that you can farm over and over again in order to boost your decoration collection when it's available. So The Names Lava Seath will probably be a rotating event, it's probably only going to show up around the festivals. So, the goal of this guide is to help you defeat Lava Seath easily, and this is going to net you even more rewards. So there's a few things I want to do. I want to give you the best tips for fighting Lava Seath, and then we want to look at a few builds, followed by a breakdown of his most dangerous attacks. Let's start by talking about the tips. Tip number one is that Lava Seath can be captured, so bring traps and bring trap crafting materials if you want to freeze him in place a few times. So you can put down a shock trap, he gets out of it, you craft another one and put another shock trap down. Lava Seath tends to run around a lot in the fight, so this is actually pretty useful for getting him to stand still, especially if you're in a group and you can kind of trade off. Tip number two is that you can actually push Lava Seath out of his annoying nest. So there's a part of the map that we call the nest of the monster, that's where they go to sleep. And you can push him out of this by firing dung pods at him early on in the fight. Lava Seath fights better from his nest because he can use an attack where he jumps between uh, a few different holes and he causes splashes of lava to shoot out all around you and he likes to stay underground a lot during this move. Also, there's just better environmental advantages for you in both of the other areas that you can push him into. Not to mention, bringing dung pods is useful anyways for getting rid of any monster that tries to interrupt your fight, like Uragon, Bazogus, Azur Rathalos, those are a few. Uh, yeah, those guys come in and they just, they're gonna wreck you because they're also tier two monsters and it's already not fun fighting Lava Seath, so you don't wanna fight them at the same time. For tip number three, I want to mention that Lava Seath has a three star weakness to poison. That means if you put him to sleep by something, maybe like sleep ammo, might be the bond ball on your palico, by the way, you're, you can give the bond ball to your palico and your palico will put him to sleep. Uh, once he's gone to sleep, you can easily poison him with a poison smoke bomb or two, okay? And that's, you know, it's not a big deal, but it, it, it's extra damage, right? It's gonna get the fight done faster. He's also pretty weak to stun damage. This will give you a KO and apparently paralysis as well. So this is going to be a fight where bow guns can really use a lot of different ailment ammo types on them pretty effectively. For tip number four, I want to talk more about slinger pods that work on Lava Seath. We already mentioned dung pods for making sure that you aren't interrupted by other monsters, but some players also like to talk a big game about using the torch pods to heat up his armor. This does work. You can shoot the ground and wait for him to walk over the flaming torch pod. But I find it to be a big drop off in damage because you really should just understand his armor better and then build your setup to do high damage and focus on using your weapon all of the time rather than sheathing it and using the slinger pods. Uh, of course, we have to add an asterisk to that because uh, if you're using something like the sword and shield, it's a little bit easier, right? You can pick up the torch pods and use them whenever you want because you don't have to sheath. But let's say you're using something like, I don't know, a lance. You wouldn't actually want to put your lance away and shoot torch pods everywhere. It'd be a waste of time. Similarly, I know that screamer pods can be used to pull them out of the ground in some cases, but this is not true for his special nest attack where he goes underground. Screamer pods don't work on him there. So you really don't need screamer pods for this fight. I mean, he goes underground once or twice, but it's not that much. Dung pods are your best option for getting rid of other monsters, and flash pods are probably your second best option for interrupting him during his most dangerous attack, his giant fireball. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't worry about slinger pods, in, again, unless you're using sword and shield. 
Tip number five is all about defense. Lava Seath is another one of those pesky fire damage monsters. That means if you want to build good defense, you're probably going to be building the Teostra Gamma set whenever you want Master's Touch and good fire resistance, right? Those two go together. Bringing the Fireproof Mantle, eating Elemental Resist Large at the Canteen, and drinking a Cool Drink are the other ways you're going to uh, contribute toward your fire resistance. There's also the Kot Haroth Gamma Legs for Heat Guard. These are going to help you with the bits of damage you take from the heated floor. It uh, just depends on if you can bring it or not, right? Like if you have a blade weapon where the white sharpness is really important, obviously you're going to want to take the three parts of the Teostra Gamma set, and that's going to give you Master's Touch. But if you're using a weapon where you don't need that, maybe you have a large blue sharpness bar, maybe you have a large white sharpness bar, uh, maybe you have a weapon that doesn't really rely on sharpness as much, you can go ahead and build the Kulftaroth Gamma Legs, and that's going to give you Agitator, which is a nice bit of damage, but more importantly, it gives you Heat Guard, which allows you to walk in the lava. It allows you to walk on his hot floor, and you just don't take damage. You also don't have to drink cool drinks, so if you're lazy like me, that's kind of convenient. So if you paid attention to everything I just listed for defense, he's going to have a lot of trouble killing you. It's all about building up your fire resistance, other than that health boost, protection, and fortify, right? None of Lava Seath's melee attacks are really that dangerous, it's mostly just his elemental attacks. And tip number six is going to be all about damage. We want to make sure you're doing as much damage as possible to Lava Seath and not having your weapon get deflected off of his hardened armor. I want to start by sharing a list of his hit zone data from Kira Nico's website. I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. You'll notice that his hit zones are just terrible after they've hardened. They improve a bit after they've been broken, and then they improve a lot when they're heated. So your goal is mostly to keep his parts heated. Water damage is also going to be doing the most damage for elemental types, and we could talk a little bit about that when we show off some builds. As you know, Lava Seath will go underground and pop up out of the ground with his body glowing red. It's at this point that his body is heated and his hit zones are ready to take high damage. But as time passes, these parts cool off and then you do considerably less damage to them. It turns out if you're dealing fire damage with your weapon, despite the fact that fire damage itself does low damage to him, any fire damage will cause his parts to glow and heat up again. That's why for slow weapons that mostly deal raw damage, you're going to be picking your best fire damage options out of that list, and you're going to use that little bit of fire damage to make his parts glow, and then your raw damage is what's really doing all of the work against him. For fast melee weapons where you want to deal water damage, I strongly recommend you bring the Mind's Eye decoration onto your build. This is for the melee weapons, right? This is going to stop your weapon from being deflected. However, most people don't own this decoration, does that mean that you should build your weapon with the Lunastra or Rathalos armor set, right? Like if you get four pieces of those armor sets, you're going to get uh, the Mind's Eye Ballistic skill. Personally, I wouldn't do this. There's just too many other build options that will allow you to defeat Lava Seath without being so inefficient. So what I'm saying here is, if you don't have the Mind's Eye decoration and you want to use something like the Dual Blades, maybe don't. You could try to do it, probably you would use Oh, you would probably use the Rathalos set, you know, that's what I would do, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. Totally up to you, though. Also, as a special case for hunting horns, all hunting horns have a self-buff that gives you the Mind's Eye skill. I don't know if you guys knew that about hunting horns, so you never need to worry about building that skill if you're using a horn. Finally, explosive damage types totally ignore hit zones to deal the same amount of damage no matter where you attack. This is true for barrel bombs as well. What I'm telling you is that gun lances are going to have a pretty easy time against Lava Seath, even if they're going to burn him down in a record time. Alright, we're done with the tips, let's go ahead and jump over to looking at some effective builds. There's five primary builds that I want to show off. The first is cluster bombing. If you don't know what that is, I have a guide for it, which I'll leave a link to in the comment section. Most of you guys probably already know. Obviously, I'm starting off with this build because of its high damage and the explosive damage type of the cluster ammo. This is going to be one of your easiest solo builds against somebody like Lava Seath. There's probably a Wyvern ammo build out there with the Griffin Bazooka or even with the Horn because the Horn gets spread ammo. But personally, if you want to go fast and you want to use a heavy bowgun, probably going to be hard to beat cluster bombing.
The second build is going to be the long shelling gun lance setup that is near indestructible. As you know, gun lance shells are an explosive damage type, so they're going to ignore Lava Sia's hit zones to always do the same amount of damage. This is really good, by the way. You can also guard his fireball attacks with the shield, and just because of the nature of only needing artillery and magazine capacity to increase your damage, and I suppose focus, right? Only needing those skills actually leaves a whole bunch of decoration slots open to build a ton of defense. After the Gunlance, I wanted to show you that for the Wyvern Ignition Impact Greatsword build, I would recommend going with a fire defense setup and then trade out the elementalist that you would normally bring for one level of free element. So you're gonna lose a little bit of damage, you're gonna gain access to your hidden fire damage, right? And this is going to give you that bit of fire damage needed for heating his armor. This same trick can actually be used for the Terrath Claw Lance, by the way. So if you're a Lance user, do exactly the same thing. Build a Teostra set for your Master's Touch, and then rather than a level of Elementalist, bring one level of free element. For the hammers, here's a gyre hammer build that I tested out. It was great. I think that hammers actually do pretty well against Lava Seath, probably because he has a two-star weakness to stun. I have the Kiar version of the gyre hammer, but you can use a lower version of it if you don't own this one. The other thing I want to point out is since we're using the gyre hammer, uh, the gyre hammer it doesn't really build white sharpness, it's just a blue sharpness hammer, so you're not forced to use Master's Touch, and this is what allows you to build the Kulvtaroth Gamma Legs on the setup. And here's a water ammo build for the light bow guns. Note that if you're going to go with the bow build, similarly, you're going to want to use a water bow. So water ammo on the bow guns, water bow for the bows. Water ammo and water arrows are both very effective against the Lava Seath. I especially felt like you could stay a pretty safe distance from him with the water ammo when you're using a light bow gun. And if you strafe back and forth with the light bow gun, all of his fireballs tend to miss. All right, we're done taking a look at some quality builds against Lava Seath. Finally, what I normally do in my monster guides is I examine the moveset that you'll want to avoid. In this case, Lava Seath really only has a few dangerous attacks, so we're gonna go through this pretty fast. I want to mention at the start that his roar doesn't seem to cause flinching, which means you never need earplugs, and you can just keep attacking through this roar. Next, I want to point out that Lava Seath often causes the hot floor condition with his attacks. This is where it looks like there's lava on the floor, and if you step on it, you get fire blighted and you take ticks of damage for as long as you're standing on it. You'll definitely want to consider the heat guard or at least 20 fire resistance to help deal with this because it can really cause a lot of chip damage, more than you typically realize. We have a great way to build heat guard now. I already showed you it's with the Kulvteroth Gamma Legs. After the hot floor, the number one most dangerous attack Lava Seath has is his large fireball. You'll know he's using the large fireball because he's typically out of melee range, and then what he does is he begins to charge up a move the same way Kushala Daora does, and when he's done charging, he'll let out a fireball from his mouth, but this one's more damaging than a typical fireball. What's so difficult about dodging this one is that the attack is going to be both a projectile and it's going to have an explosion at the end. The explosion will often catch you if you tried to dodge the projectile. It just lasts longer, right? Which means it's much safer to try and outspace the large fireball or to try and guard it. This is also his highest damaging attack. So if he tags you with it, it could easily one-shot some builds or finish you off if you were already missing some of your health, which is probably what's going to happen to most of you. You can see, even on a setup with very high fire resistance, that he is still able to bring me down to half health with this move. Please note that the explosion has sort of a hidden box to it, so even if it looks like that fireball is not going to land next to you, you can mistakenly walk into it. So uh, take a look at that hidden hitbox, you can see me guarding it in this scene. I also learned that Lava Seath's swimming attack doesn't seem to have a hitbox directly on his head, 
but rather it's on his body. You can see that in this footage I've captured where I'm stunned, and therefore I'm standing perfectly still, but he kind of misses me with his head and then gets me with the, a little past the head, right? Maybe past the neck. Capcom may have made it this way so that when he begins the swim attack, he doesn't accidentally miss you by leaping over you with the hitbox, right? So it, it kind of makes sense having it in the middle of his body. Next, Lava Seath has a number of times where he'll use his lesser fireball attacks. This is still kind of dangerous, but really not as much as the giant fireball. What I find difficult about this is, uh, well, it, he's what's most difficult about Lava Seath is trying to keep your health up before he uses the large fireball, okay? So you're gonna experience a lot of his weaker physical attacks coming out quickly and doing some chip damage to your health, as well as the hot floor that I talked about. You know, if you stand on it, you're gonna take chip damage. And then, of course, what I just mentioned, the lesser fireball, he's gonna shoot those at you occasionally. They won't be quite as damaging, but they're gonna do some damage. The mistake you're going to inevitably make is that you're going to ignore the damage you took because you don't feel like stopping and healing it up. Maybe you think, oh, I'll just attack him and I'm gonna get health regen. And what's gonna happen is he's gonna back up and finish you off with just one large fireball because you're already missing a little bit of health. And the large fireball, again, is much harder to dodge and much higher damage than any of his other moves. So if you just practice avoiding that one attack, you're going to be in good shape. And then with the lesser fireballs, you know, you can play a bit more aggressively with those, I would say. Like, you can try to dodge through them, but don't mess around with that large fireball. His last really notable move is when you have to fight him in his nest. And he goes underground and jumps between the holes in this stage of the map. Anytime he makes a leap, there's going to be these splashes of lava that fall down on top of you, and these can actually hit you and do an, a nice little chunk of damage. It's actually very annoying to try and dodge these, not to mention you can't really damage him in this phase, so you're just kind of like, you know, standing around feeling awkward, maybe a little bit impatient, waiting to attack him, and then he splashes you with lava. It's very annoying. So if you can guard during this phase, I would just hold the guard up. If you have temporal mantle, put the temporal mantle on, and of course, we already talked about getting him to simply move out of this area by hitting him with a, a dunk pod, right? He'll move to area, you know, there's only three areas you fight him and he'll run off to either of the other two. It's really up to you to do this though because I don't consider him difficult enough to worry about, but if you're struggling, getting him out of his nest might be a good idea. All right, it's the end of the video. I got two bonus tips for you. Number one, I noticed Lava Seath is very easy to flinch. And number two, I also noticed he is not capturable after dropping two slinger pods. So even if he drops two slinger pods, you're going to have to continue to watch his heartbeat and do additional damage until his heartbeat is low enough that you can capture him. Also, those slinger pods that he drops are going to be the bomb pods. So you may want to use those on him because you know, it's pretty easy, right? They're like the only slinger pod ammo in the game that does serious damage. All right, we covered some great tips recommended builds, and a look at his most dangerous moveset. I even provided you a link to his hit zones. That's the end of the guide. If I missed anything, be sure to share it in the comment section. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.